Hello there and welcome to your Numbers for Life live lesson. Um, so I'm just going to run through with you some of the activities that we've actually got ready for you today. Um, I'm hoping you're going to actually enjoy these ones quite a bit. You know, some of them um, are a little bit challenging in different levels and stuff like that. Um, and actually they will all lead on to and they're all related to other work that we've either been doing or are going to do in the future. Uh, so this um, first one here that I'm going to start off with um, and bring up as an example, um, this is something you will be on Thursday um, looking back at this and doing some work that is connected directly to this piece of work here. Okay, so make sure you keep hold of it, make sure you keep it nice and safe. So um, you can see that there is a picture here for you. Um, on the picture, uh, there are various things that are actually um, happening um, and it's a nice, to keep with our theme of flow and like water and stuff like that, you can see it's a nice seaside theme. Now, um, what we want you to do is that you can recognize the numbers one to five if you have a little look down at this section here, you can see that the numbers one to five are written down. What you need to do is you need to look at what the object is here. So for example, we've got kites, okay? Um, so if you were to have a look at that one now, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, do that. So we are looking at kites. Okay, so how many are there? Can you circle the right number? Now, when you count things, I'm gonna give you a little hint here, a little tip really good make a mark to show that you've counted it otherwise what you can do is and it's quite an easy mistake to make is that you actually end up counting that same thing twice or maybe even more times and you end up getting the wrong number down okay so if we have a little look at the kites we can see well there's, there's no no that's not a kite that's a bird there's another aha uh -huh, right okay so we've got a kite here so we've got one we've got two and we've got three. Let's have a little look around, see if we can see anything else. No, nope. so it would be that there are three kites. Um, and then what we can do is we come down here and we will circle the correct number. So there were three kites shown in this picture. Okay, um, so you've got that and then you've got it for buckets, you've got it for spades, you've got it for birds, and you've got it for boats. Okay, um, have a little look carefully with some of these um, ones here. Hopefully the picture comes out for you nice and clearly um, when you print it out. Cool, well done guys. So that's um, looking at that bit there. Now, um, next level up, what we're looking for is we've got the same picture here, um, but this time round, you are gonna be looking at recording the information for me, but also actually recording it in the form of a tally. Now, who can remember how we use a tally? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly demonstrate for you. So when you use a tally, it's a really good way of quickly collecting information. So say for instance, you're counting the number of blue cars that go past you. If you quickly, if you're having to write down the number all the time, then actually you're gonna lose count. You're not gonna keep up with what it is that you are meant to be doing. Okay, so what we do here is um, we will make a mark. So if we were to say, for instance, see, now we're not obviously not counting blue cars in our picture here, but if we saw one car going past, we would make a mark. Then, oh, look, we've got another one that's just gone past. So we make another one there, and we can see that this is the number two that is represented. Oh, we've got another one there, so there's three, and then four. Now, this is a tricky part. This is where you need to be really, really careful. Some people might think, okay, five, we just put down like that. But what can happen is everything starts getting really messy and then you think, how many was that? And it gets really, really tricky to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of these away. We're gonna go back to our number four again. So when you get to the number five, okay, what you do is you will go across like this and you like cross it out. So it almost looks like a gate. And that for you is the number five. The number four is just shown as four of these going down. Okay, so that would be the number four. The number three is just three of these. Okay, 
Um, I, yet again, I apologise. I am trying to do this with the mouse. It's not the easiest thing in the world. The number two and the number one. Okay, so that is how you would represent those numbers. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what happens um, when actually I need to go up um, to number six? Okay, so if we start off, so I'm just going to quickly rub this bit here out. So what we would do to go up to the number um, six, so in the same way you go up and you're doing your counting, one, two, three, four, Five, and you can really easily see that that is a number five. Ah, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, and it would kind of carry on like that. So each one of these is worth five. Cool. Okay, guys, uh, so there's that one there. Um, now for uh, some of the others of you, so um, top level, so uh, what we're looking at here is we are representing data in bar charts again, but you will see that you have got um, a tally, you've got some information here. Now this shows um, the number of visitors between different times that have actually gone into a place. You will see that some of the numbers have gone quite high, um, and you will need to check that, but your tally has been totaled for you here at the end. You can see where it has actually been totaled for you. What you are going to need to do is you're going to need to think about how many um, units of data or how many blocks of data am I going to have to represent and how high. So what's my biggest number and what's my smallest number? You're then going to have a choice. You've got two um, blank um Sort of sections of uh, graph paper, you're going to need to decide which one am I going to use. Are you going to use the one which is portrait or are you going to use the one which is landscape? Okay, um, what is more important? I've got sort of more height, you know, more um, scale to use going up or that I've got more scale to use going across. Okay, you will then need to decide on what's your title going to be, what are your labels going to be um, for this. Um, you know, how are you going to put it in? What scale are you going to use? Can you use a one-to-one -one scale or are actually going to have to use uh, each square represents two? Uh, and then what do you do if, say, for instance, you've got each square represents two and you've got an odd number? So maybe you've got like the number nine there. OK, how do you represent the number nine? OK, so have a little look at that. Um, use the totals that have been put at the end there for you when you actually construct your graphs. Um, and that would be really cool. Anyway, um, any questions? Remember, use the chat function on the page and we will get um, back to you as soon as possible. Well done, guys. Take care and see you soon.